You know, I find it very humorous. Um, very humorous. That, you know, last week was what they call Holy Week, right? Yesterday, Rome tells you that that was the actual chronological day or something like that, or whatever, um, about the Lord's death, burial, and resurrection. <laughs> yeah, believe what Rome tells you. But I, I find it so deliciously ironic that immediately following this year's uh, start tank, we have what is known as April 1st, April Fool's Day. And um, <laughs> it, it, the irony of it, the irony of it, <laughs> it it's, it's, it's delicious. It's, you, look, you, you know, you step back and just look at things as they actually are in the light of Scripture and you know, brethren, the longer you walk with the Lord, when you look at that, that, the world, and everything associated with the world, you begin to understand vanity of vanity, saith the preacher. All is vanity. Hmm. But, Today is April Fool's Day. Now, if you want to put the little E on the end of that, go right ahead. Um, I know when my wife worked at the sheltered village with the residents and whatnot, that uh, on April Fool's Day, the then boss of the kitchen or whatever <coughs> would like to do pranks. And uh, Lord had me to do a video on pranks here, especially on these YouTube people and channels that like prank each other and husband and wife and that kind of that will be in the description box uh, but the fool the fool I, I, I also refer to this day as atheists day <laughs> atheists Psalm 14 verses 1 on to verse 3 the fool has said in his heart there is no God that's capital G, God. But see, the atheist does believe in a God. Themselves. They are corrupt. They have done abominable works. There is none that doeth good. The Lord looked down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there were any that did understand and seek God. Oh, and there's, you know, people nowadays are progressive, right? Man's getting better. Yeah. They are all gone aside. They are all together become filthy. There is none that doeth good. No, not one. Let's read verse 4. Have all the workers of iniquity no knowledge? Well, sure they do. Sure they do. But see, the knowledge that the workers of iniquity have is based off of a wisdom that is earthly, sensual definition. Uh, the majority of all denominations of Christianity are like that. Weed up my people as they eat bread and call not upon the Lord. Proverbs 1. Today is the first. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom, look at the, look at the flow here. To know wisdom, number one, and instruction. To perceive the words of understanding. And unto man he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Or, elsewhere it says, and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. You know what is holy. 
then you can first first know what is holy, the authorized version. And then after that, after getting uh, to know a little of the holy, you'll be able to spot the profane. To receive instruction, there's instruction again, of wisdom. Of wisdom. Justice and judgment and equity. To give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. Look at these key words in these verses that we have already looked at, okay? Wisdom leads into instruction, understanding. Instruction again with wisdom, justice and judgment and equity. Subtlety and we see knowledge, knowledge, knowledge. Lots of people do have knowledge. But what knowledge is this based off of? What wisdom produces the knowledge that's going on today? We, we already know the answer to that. If you're a saint. A wise man will hear. Well, who's a wise man? A wise man has wisdom. Which wisdom, though? And will increase learning. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. Understanding departing from evil. Departing from evil. Things of the world. So, a wise man will hear. And will increase learning. A man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsels. The wise man is someone who fears the Lord, and understanding departing from evil, of course. To understand a proverb, and the interpretation, and the words of the wise, and their dark sayings. Now, dark sayings there is not meaning that they are in darkness, meaning that they are bad or anything, God forbid, no. See, Jesus Christ is that light that lighteneth the world. He's the capital L light as well, okay? Uh, but see, God is a spirit. Jesus Christ is that capital L light. There is also a counterfeit who transforms himself into an angel of light. And you can learn how to distinguish the two by reading the scriptures. Okay? But the dark sayings are those dark sayings to those who are not of the church of God. Those who do not have the love of God in them. Okay? So the dark sayings are dark because others cannot see them, even though they can read it. Does that make sense? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Amen. Amen. And unto man, he said, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools who say in their heart, despise wisdom and instruction. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. Because they are their own God. Fool says in his heart, there is no God. My son, hear the instruction of thy father. The father said, when I say jump, you say hi, hi, boy. And forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 31, you know, the one about Lemuel. Saw, uh, Proverbs 31, just one verse, just one verse. About the woman. See, in Proverbs 31... Verses 8 and 9 for the men. Okay, look at that. My son, verse 8 in Proverbs 1. Hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Proverbs 31. 
Open thy mouth for the dumb, those who cannot speak, in the, in the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Open thy mouth, judge righteously, plead the cause of the poor and needy. Okay? And then for the woman, the mother, verse 26, oh, no, 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 uh, verse 25, on to verse 27. Godly woman. Godly woman. Which scripture tells us in verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman? Her price is far above rubies. And this virtuous woman is defined at the end here, verse 30, favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Why? Because strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She opened her mouth with wisdom for the Lord, and in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idols. My son, back to Proverbs 1, verse 8, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother. They shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. My son, hmm, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, Come with us, let us lay wait for blood, let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave, and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. <laughs> Let us all have one purse, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Verses 14 to the close. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Belial. Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said. I will dwell in them, and walk in them, and, they will be my, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore? Wherefore? Come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you, and will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And then, of course, Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Verses, oh, 6 under verse 8. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therewith, therein with thanksgiving. Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy, in vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the coiled, and not after Christ. Look back in Proverbs 1. We see enticement, verse 10. Lurking, privily, waiting to strike. Looking for the opportune moment to get an advantage. Swallowing them up alive as the grave. Hey, let us eat and drink for tomorrow we die. Got to be all about number one, right? Hmm. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. It's all about them. I, 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 me, me, me. 
<laughs> Cast thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Come on. Come on, a little don't hurt you. <laughs> right? Just as if you. My son, walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood, because they call evil good and good evil. Surely in vain, vanity, the net is spread in the sight of any bird. And they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of every one that is greedy of gain, which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Wisdom trieth without. Here we see in the book of Proverbs, the first uh, mention in the book of Proverbs of the feminine beauty conveyed unto us of how the fear of the Lord we should view it as something beautiful to behold. We are given this to compare to the beauty of woman because remember, woman is the glory of man. And sisters, praise the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. We already saw, woman who feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Who can find a virtuous woman? A virtuous woman. Virtuous one. They exist, you know. They do. Where are they? I don't know. <laughs> but they do exist. And see, we're told in Scripture that you sisters, a virtuous woman, your price is far above rubies. Because with the feminization that has gone on, and especially amongst King James Bible believing Christians, huh? Um, true scriptural femininity has been blurred. Oh, gee, imagine that, huh? But wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the streets. She crieth in the chief place of concourse, in the opening of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, Okay? She. Fear the Lord. Wisdom. We are to see wisdom. We are given the example of a beautiful woman. Now, for you women, of course, I mean, you see another, nothing sodomite but you, you see another, I, it's like, oh, she's pretty, she's beautiful. And between women, that, that's, you know, they can say that and not have any sodomite inclinations whatsoever. Okay? So, okay? But wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is given, the, given us that picturesque thing of the beauty of a woman. A virtuous woman. Whose price is far above rubies. Do you get it? How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. But what's he? What knowledge? Because, hey, right? A lot of these atheists, they have a knowledge. But they hate true knowledge that comes from true wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Verse 7 is a perfect thing to show you what the fear of the Lord is. It's wisdom. And fools who say in their heart, Hey, <laughs> you guys are a joke. And see, the beauty of wisdom calls to turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my lowercase s in part spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. And see, you are without excuse. 
you atheists, who have heard the true gospel, who have heard of the true Jesus Christ, and you reject it because you are your own God, turn you at my reproof. I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Unto. Unto. Yeah, unto. Okay? All right? Because I have called. Called way of the cross. And ye refuse. Professing yourselves to be wise, you become fools. Because your wisdom is earthly central devilish. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught my count, all my counsel. Ye would none of my reproof. <laughs> you ever been reading the scripture to someone? And uh, just like uh, what happened with Paul in the book of Acts. When he said to them, when he was giving his defense unto his brethren, the Hebraic Jews, and he's like, he said something like, oh, the Lord said for me to go on to the Gentiles. And they, the Jews are like, away with such a fellow from the earth. They gave, him, they gave ear up to him, onto him, up to that word where he mentioned going on to the Gentiles. Okay, the point is, Lord, you know, Paul, Paul said something that they didn't like. And they say, away with him. Away with him. <laughs> and in witnessing, if you're reading the scriptures to someone, there could come a chance when you read something specific and they're like, I don't want to hear that, man. Uh, you, you, can, you can go take that and... Can I give you a try? No? Okay. <laughs> All right. Always ask them if they want to hear it. I, that I've learned through trial and error. Um, ask them, it's like, you want to hear it? You want to hear it? You want to hear the answer? I got, I got a sword on me here. You want to hear it? Ask them that. Ask them. If they say yes, and you start, you know, the Lord starts doing stuff, and they retract, that, that's on them, not you. <laughs> okay? Just, just, just the thing, because... So many people, you know, it's like, here, I can show you. It's like, go ahead, show me. And you start showing them, and then they back off. It's like, I don't want to hear that. It's like, you asked. <laughs> you asked. Do you really want to hear it? Most of the time, they don't. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear comes. Now, see, that, that, that holds, that's contrary to the God that Christianity presents, the God loves you one, you know, the God that's not angry at you, the God who doesn't judge you, and blah, 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 you know, yes, yes, and if anyone has a right to be angry at what he created <laughs> for not making the right choice, see, because God doesn't want a robot, okay, God doesn't want a robot, Mr. Calvin. Okay? And if he chooses for you, you are a robot. He wants us to make the right choice. And when you don't and go contrary, he who made you has every right to be angry at you for not, hey, you know, you're here because I allowed you to. And see, atheists will be like, well, that's vindictive or that God is, you know, jealous. Yeah, he is. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. You know, Mr. Atheist, whether you want to accept this or not, is irrelevant. Okay? You were created by God. You are here because God has allowed it. He has every right to be angry at you when you refuse him for yourself. But see, God loves you. <laughs> yeah. uh. 
When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as whirlwind, when distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Why? For that they hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. They would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them. And the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. One, one moment, one moment. Sorry about that. I had to had to write down some things because I mean, this is like spur of the moment if you haven't noticed. For the turning away, verse 32, of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. Romans chapter 1. See, you, you atheists, you people who reject the truth of Jesus Christ, um, God will give you what you want. <laughs> verse 22 on to verse 25 in Romans 1 professing themselves to be wise they became fools and changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man you are your own God and to birds and four footed beasts and creeping things wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Satan is a created being, but you guys are worshipping yourselves as your own God. Proverbs 26. Proverbs 26. As I refer to it as the fool's proverb. <laughs> As snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. When you say in your heart, there is no God, but actually you are your own God. <laughs> wow, yeah. Um, yeah, honor. Yeah. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. The curse causeless. No one's innocent. Well, that's not a child before they can uh, comprehend and understand the magnitude of what it means to be a sinner and that you've sinned against God. All also referred to as the age of accountability, which does not, age of accountability, does not appear in Scripture. No, it does not. You are right. But Scripture shows us that there is this thing where you have to at least have a capacity to understand what it is to be a sinner and to understand that you have sinned against God. Okay? And there are uh, simple-minded people out there who hide behind mental disabilities, but yet are aware. Okay? Don't. Just because someone might have a mental disability does not mean that they're harmless. Don't forget that. Dark implants. Dark implants. I've run across... Um, I've run across dark implants especially on YouTube the guy from Australia he, he's he's a great example of you know of a dark implant but anyway there's no one innocent children before the age of accountability they, they don't know anything but as soon as they pick up tricks okay but at the great white throne where a majority of you are going to be judged at Ain't one of you are going to be saying you never heard the truth. No, not one. Great white throne of judgment, there isn't one innocent person. In hell, there isn't one innocent person. 
Oh, you're not that bad though, right? Right. A whip for the wuss, a bridle for the ass, a rod for the fool's back. And here's something that I have blundered on many occasions. You can eat, actually see on videos here. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Don't fight fire with fire. Uh, don't fight evil with evil. Evil. Overcome evil with good. Be not overcome of evil. Overcome evil with good. And what is good? God. Okay? When they uh, attack you, you, you bless by demonstrating truth. Okay? Yeah. I, I've blundered this on quite a few occasions. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. And, oh, boy. Oh boy, I've blown this one before myself. Because when, an, especially when an enemy, a coadjutor, knows your trigger points and can pick at you, and you go off and don't just sit there, and it's like, ha ha ha, I got you. Atheists, too, are, um, are like that as well. They try to, you know, get you. So you can go, it's like, ha ha ha, I got you. Okay? He that sendeth a message by the hand of a fool cutteth off the feet and drinketh damage. Cutteth off the feet, you ain't going to go anywhere. Drinketh damage, it's poisonous. The legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. Yes, because they're dark sayings to the fool. Not that they're not, not that you can't see, you know, it's the, the Lord is the one who opens up the scripture to get the deeper things of scripture. Fools don't have that, obviously. <laughs> obviously. Okay, hence the sayings are dark sayings. <laughs> okay, the legs of the lame are not equal. So is a parable in the mouth of fools. <clears throat> we, oh, by the way, uh, we are going to be reading to verse 12 here. And not the whole uh, proverb. As he that bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honor to a fool. Honor to a fool. Honor to a fool. That's twice, twice mentioned in this very proverb. As snow in summer and as rain in harvest, out of place. So is honor, so honor is not seemingly for a fool, out of place. Snow and summer. <laughs> Woodstock. Could probably happen. Okay? We've had snow up here in May. So has uh, Brother Jeff, who is in uh, Dakota, over in North Dakota. They've had snow in May. Some you Canadians have had snow in May. Probably even in June. <laughs> okay? <laughs> right? But that's twice. Twice the admonition about giving honor to a fool. If someone comes in his own name, him you will receive. As a thorn goeth up into the hand of a drunkard, so is a parable in the mouth of fools. You're drunk, you're intoxicated, and you go to grab a rose, and you don't pay attention that there's a thorn there. It's like, ow! So is a parable in the mouth of fools. <laughs> yes. Like I was saying, you can read some uh, scripture to a person who's like, yeah, sure, tell me. Like, in a way, testing you. It's like, oh, sure, go ahead, and you tell me. And then it's completely opposite of what they were expecting because they've run into Christians. And they're like, I don't want to hear that. You ask. <laughs> you say, yeah, sure, show me. The great God that formed all things, that, that includes you, fool, both rewardeth the fool and rewardeth transgressors as a dog turneth to his vomit. So is a fool, so a fool returneth to his folly. And the sow that was washed to the wallowing in her, in her mire, 
Okay? That's not in this text right here. Verse 12. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? An old and foolish king. Old and foolish king will no more be admonished. Uh, you atheists. But here's the interesting thing about this. Seest thou a man wise in his own conceit? There is more hope of a fool than of him. And someone who is wise in their own conceit <laughs> stems from being a fool. But yet, the Lord's like, no, I won't just, you know, like there's a degree <laughs> or something. And how many of these, oh, I've run into them, where trying to explain something and they keep cutting you off. They won't let you, they won't let you explain it. Or something like that. It's like, you know, like, dude, why, why are you, you're the one who's cutting me off. You're the one being rude. Okay, yeah, I yelled at you, but I, at least I'm giving you the chance to speak. You ain't, you don't want to hear this. And then they think, like, well, you can't, well, you won't let me speak. Okay? And I'm not going to have a shouting match over you with scripture. I'm not going to do that. Anyway, like I said, this is just a spur of the moment. I read that this morning, and it's like, huh, huh. That did very, very fascinating to me. I mean, it is. This, this whole thing about this ridiculous Catholic pagan Holy Week thing, and then April 1st is <laughs> April Fool's Day. It's just, it's, it's just so, <laughs> it's full of wonder. It's sad, but, you know, you get to a point, man, where you just got to sit back and understand vanity of vanity, said the preacher. All is vanity. That's going to be it for this little video. Just just something short today. Uh, like I said, um, just one. <laughs> hey, atheist! <laughs> this is your day. <laughs> Revel in it, because... Tomorrow, you know, eat and drink for tomorrow you'll die. Roll you up another one, buddy. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. If you do, brethren, we love you. And we'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Bye-bye.